definitely need to be discussed. So I see we're recording now, which means that we are live, honey. So welcome to How to Move in a Room Full of Vultures. And once we get started, the name I think will make more sense to people. Um, Cause like I said, we're, we're the different panel. We're a little bit outside of the norm um, or the, I could say the speed of how the con is kind of going. Um, shout out to everybody that's watching. If you haven't gotten a chance, make sure that you follow HBCU con on all platforms um, and make sure you join us this week. It's, it's a lot of cool stuff going on. I, for one, am not um, indebted in into the con lifestyle, but I have learned a lot and I have a lot of respect uh, for those that uh, take the time out to to teach and to, to, to show us what that lifestyle is all about. So how I want to kind of get started is I want y'all to introduce yourselves. Hold on, let me look at my notes. I got notes here. Okay. So I want you to introduce yourself. I want you to Name the college that you attended, both grad and undergrad, because we got some master's degrees up in here. And your current field um, of work. So what you do right now. And then I have, like, I threw another one in there, but I'll let y'all do your introductions first, and then we'll get to that. So Candace, you can go first. Oh, well, I'm Candace Brown. I went to the Bowie State University for both undergrad and graduate school. Um, I have a degree in communication, both degrees in communication. Um, my current industry is the federal government, and I work as a public affairs specialist. Okay, before you go, Joyous, Candice, what's your favorite? Because we got to tie this in to, to the con aspect. So I got some, I got some, uh, some things I'm going to throw in from time to time to kind of like get a, get to kind of make it all go full circle. So... Okay. Which, which I, what is either your favorite video game or board game? Do you have one? I don't. I'm an only kid, so <laughs> I don't play. I didn't have what any game that? consoles. Um, How about if you went to the arcade? What's your favorite game at the arcade? I have no clue. Hey. I would probably play. I would probably play <laughs> Pac-Man by default, just because that's the only thing I know how to play okay. uh, outside of maybe like Street Fighter or one of the driving games, but outside of that. Okay, all right, all right, Joy. So my name is Joyous and I am too, a two-time graduate of Bowie State University. Um, both of my degrees as well are in communications. And what's the last one? Uh, the industry I'm in. Yeah, so I'm in the private industry. I currently work for a government and public relations firm. Um, right now, to be specific, uh, I do public outreach for construction management. Hmm, that's a lot. I didn't know I would end up there, but I'm here. Still within my field. I love it, actually. Happy I stumbled across it. <laughs> so do I have the same question? Yes. Because I know my answer. So my favorite game, I actually have a couple, actually. So my favorite game would have been, well, would, was, I used to play Grand Theft Auto all the time. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, and this is going to, like, completely, like, age me, but um, remember the shooting ducks game on Nintendo? Yes. <laughs> That was my game. I love that game. And then I also like like Sonic the Hedgehog too. So So my name is Tomika, or as my mother calls me, Tomika. Um, I don't even know the question. Oh, I graduated from the Bowie State University. That's my undergrad degree. And I have my master's from uh, the University of Baltimore. My undergrad degree is in sociology my master's degrees in human service administration, and I am a government contractor. My favorite game, ooh. I like any racing game, because I like to drive fast. I like Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog, and any Mario. Like, when I had uh, Super Nintendo, bruh, you couldn't tell me that I could not beat that game. Like, <laughs> you could not tell me that I couldn't beat that game. And it was like, I would get all the way to the last level and lose. So that was that for me. All right, cool. So we got the intros out the way. So 
how to move in a room full of vultures. Basically what we're gonna cover, and we're not gonna cover everything, because again, we only have an hour and I know that there are a lot of topics that we probably won't even get to hit on, but it'll at least chip away at the ice and start the conversation. So as black women, we experience a different culture and or environment in our workforce depending on, it doesn't even necessarily matter what you do from, from t being a teacher to nursing, social work, um, working in construction, working in PR. There is a different, it's a difference in, I feel, in how we are treated, how we are trained, how we are um, brought into different fields. And I wanted to discuss that. And I think again, while it is a different topic that pulls away from what, what we are kind of, what the con is actually um, based on, I think that most people can relate to this, especially if you're a black female. So let's get going. So the first question is, and we're gonna go in order. So Candace, you can, this is, this is you first. How do you feel your HBCU experience prepared you for the workforce? Or mm -hmm. Receipts, receipts, receipts. On top of receipts, you better have something printed out. You better have a name, you better have a contact number, date, time. Um, definitely a paper trail was the very first thing that Bowie definitely gave me a, a challenge on. I, I learned quickly because once you stand in financial, once upon a time, uh, once you stand in financial aid <laughs> for about an hour, you get to talk to somebody, you don't have everything that you need. You're, you're pretty much upset because that's like a day wasted, especially if you're skipping class to go handle these things. You don't want, to, you want your classes to drop. Um, but I would say another thing that Bowie taught me is how to, how to have conversations with my colleagues, even though they're in different positions than me. So me as a student having conversations with my professor and being able to kind of challenge some of their thought process or maybe their grade or even um, having the conversation with the chair, like, look, chair, I need to do this, that, and the third, and this didn't happen for me, um, you know, just looking for some insight. So receipts and having conversations with people that are on different levels were definitely two of the biggest lessons that I learned from Bowie. Okay, that was good. All right, Joy? I would say the same. Um, that paper trail will save your entire life. I have had a few run-ins, um, especially when I first entered into the construction management world of doing public relations and outreach. Um, so just making sure that you have a trail where you can go back and say, well, if you refer to <laughs> the email trail dated April the 26th, 2019, this is 2021. It was mentioned. I stated it actually. If you look at it, my signature block is at the bottom. <laughs> so yes, definitely make sure that you have your receipts. Um, also, again, with I believe how our college experience was was that we our professors were accessible to us. So even though they had their degrees, they were there teaching us. They were still accessible for us to us, which made it easier to speak to someone who was in a higher position than us, if you looked at it that way. Um, even when it came down to our school president, like they were also accessible, even with them walking on the yard, like you would be able to stop them, have a conversation with them. So that makes it easier when I have to go into these meetings where sometimes I'm the only woman, because we're talking about construction. So I work with a lot of engineers. Yeah. I'm the only woman there and then the only black woman there if there are other women there. So that kind of helped too. So, yep, we're on okay. the same page. <laughs> so paper trail must. Like, I think my mama taught me that even before I got to Bowie, but I learned how important it was when I got to Bowie. Like, you better have your receipts because somebody going to say, well, I gave, nah, sis, you didn't give me that. <laughs> and based off of this email, this says that you didn't. But I think the biggest thing for me going to Bowie was it learned me to, it taught me to be comfortable in my skin. So um, the audience does not know, but we are all three illustrious women of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Um, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And being chapter president forced me out of my comfort zone, but it also taught me how to talk to people confidently because Lord knows I'm not somebody that likes public speaking. 
um, I sweat, I shake, I be feeling like I got to go to the bathroom, like it'd be all of that in one. But I had to push through and I had to learn how to push through. And even when it came to learning how to advocate for myself, that was the first time I learned how to speak for me. You know what I mean? If it was a grade that I got that I didn't like or that I didn't think that I deserved, questioning authority because your professors are considered in a, in a, I guess you could say an authority figure, um, questioning them. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's up with this? I got to see what's going on with this C because I know I'm B material. So like, what's going on? So I think being able to advocate for myself, learning the importance of a paper trail, and then just being comfortable in who I was going into an, in, going into an industry or going into any industry um, was where, I think those were the three top things, top things for me. All right, cool. So I have my questions in order, but I'm kind of going, Okay. Okay, so how have you been able, this is the second part to this question, how have you been able to implement those experiences in your day-to-day -day routines um, on a job force? Email, I could, I'm one of those, I'm so obnoxious at work sometimes, I, I, I kind of empathize with my colleagues, but I'm one of those people that will keep the same email thread going just so we have the complete history of what has happened. Like even if there is a meeting that might come out of a con uh, email conversation, that meeting is still attached to that email thread. Um, and to continue what you were saying to make it as, be as far as being an advocate for, for yourself in, in these spaces, that, that is definitely one of them. Because if you don't speak up for yourself in, a, in the workplace, depending on where you are, you will absolutely be get out with one of these vultures. And it, it it could be anybody. It could be your supervisor. It could, it could be your colleague. It could be somebody in the next apartment that just sees, you know, sees your potential that you might not see at that particular time um, and, you know, start to pick you apart. I, I, I have um, a current experience with that, but it, it, it's starting to work itself out. But nonetheless, um, the paper trail is something that I am obnoxious about because I just feel like that is necessary that way you can't dispute black and white you can dispute what i say but you cannot dispute what's on this here paper so i use that every day even with text messages like i just make sure that whatever i'm saying on text message or whatever i'm saying on email is something that i can repeat and i can refer back to no matter who's in the room but one thing that i know um, that i'm actually learning is what you should do with emails is make sure that you are capturing all of the elements so no matter who reads it they can continue to follow along with the thread. That's kind of, that's not something that I'm good at, but it's something that I'm definitely working through right now. Okay, that's good. Hey, Joy? Yeah, so can you repeat the question? Cause I wanna make sure I don't repeat the same exact thing Candace just said, cause that was a great <laughs> point. <laughs> and I do the same. Even when I'm <laughs> receiving a phone call, I will send an email afterwards saying, as a follow up to our phone call, like yeah. <laughs> this is what we discussed. This is what I expect moving forward. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> how how have you been able to implement uh, the experiences that the experiences that you learned from Bowie into your day to day work life? So it's taught me one to be prompt. My professors in the communications department did not play. I don't care if there was a natural disaster outside. If that paper was supposed to be due <laughs> on April the 15th by 11.59 p.m., you better have had it in and not at 12 a.m. the next day because you will have points deducted. So I'm very particular. Like if I receive a deadline, I'm trying to meet it at least three to five days before. Um, I don't want to wait until the last minute because if I give it to you and then we have to go back and make edits or you want to add something, I want to be able to get it done and still meet the deadline. So I guess you can say I'm deadline oriented. Um, so that has helped, uh, also helped me with my emails. Even if someone sends me something and is thanking me, completely thanking me about what I just provided to them, even though it's my job and you're thanking me because I'm doing my job, I would still write back and say, oh, no problem. I'm happy I could assist. Like, I never try to leave an email open-ended or just left where it doesn't look like I ever came back to accept what you gave. Yeah. So yeah, that too. Okay. I like both of those. Um, so I'm going to kind of piggyback off of both. So I think Speaking on what Candace said, um, in terms of um, 
advocating for yourself. I believe that uh, when when you are black, especially a black female, um, people people gonna try you, um, especially if it's an element that you're not that's not a norm, right? So it's a norm for us to be in cosmetology. It's a norm for us to be um, in HR. Those those are those are normal positions where you're you're normally gonna see either a woman or you will see a black woman. That that's just what it is. Um, but as but when you start to get into the contracting field, especially when you're starting to work for corporate America, it's not a lot of people that look like you. And it's not a lot of people that look like you, especially when you start to get into these CEO, COO positions. There, there's usually none. And if there is a woman, it's a white woman working in an HR. She's the HR leader, director, executive, whatever. And I had to, I literally had to, I went on the I went online. And I looked at several big name companies and did a scan of their executive board. And I'm like, dang, go on. So I don't see anybody that looks like me, let it alone anybody that's walking around with hair like this, that's got braids, that, you know what I'm saying? So I had to learn when I say, when it goes back to advocating for myself, but yet being comfortable, I had to be comfortable in wearing my colorful hair. I had to be comfortable in wearing my natural hair and getting questions. Oh, well, yesterday your hair was long. What happened today? I had to be comfortable in learning how to express myself, but yet still advocate for myself at the same time. So I think Bowie did a very good job of preparing me for what the world, what the world doesn't want to see. I might touch a few people with that one but I'm just gonna put it out there because that's just what it is so um, I think all of that was great I think advocating for yourself um, a paper trail is super important so can't nobody say that they didn't get that they don't have that they didn't see um, and being able to speak up for yourself but being able to speak up for yourself professionally because we're always labeled as what what do we always say? Like? Angry black woman. black woman black woman and yeah. it don't matter what so I could literally be talking like this my normal tone and it's going to come off as being aggressive so I had to learn how to they going to take what I what I say however they going to take it but I'm still going to speak up for myself if I feel uncomfortable in a certain situation so that was good y'all okay a few things especially that hair conversation oh, let's, <laughs> we, <don't know> <laughs> yeah, we, could, we could definitely we could definitely talk on that. and I actually might have a question or two on here um about that but I know for the longest time, it was super hard for me to, to feel comfortable even wearing my natural, wearing a twist out, like without feeling like I had to always address basic questions. Oh, what you do? Well, yesterday you had uh, those long braids. Well, what happened? Mm -hmm. you know, um, your hair was blue yesterday. Today it's, why does it matter? Especially in professional spaces. So if it's like a meeting, an exec meeting, mm -hmm. there were there have been times there, I will take it back. There have been times that I have gone on interviews and I have told myself that I will not wear my natural hair because I don't know if that is going to um, hinder them hiring me. And I remember having this conversation with my mom one time and she told me, she was like, just ask them. And I was like, ask them in an interview? And she was like, yeah, ask them in an interview. And she was like, when you ask them in an interview, you can tell by their tone and how they answer the question, mm -hmm. how they're going to accept it. So I was in an interview for, um, I think it was somewhere in Baltimore. And I asked the lady, she was a black lady actually. And I was like, you know, how do y'all feel about natural hair? She was like, I was like, you know, seriously. Cause even, in, even, even working for a black woman, <laughs> even working for a black woman, there are still standards that you, that are expected to be met. You know what I'm saying? So how do you guys feel? And she was like, oh, you know, it's not a problem, blah, 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 blah. But, uh. But yeah, we can we could talk about that hair thing all day because it it is definitely a serious thing. Go ahead, Joy or Candace, whoever. I haven't. Uh, I don't wear my natural hair often, and so I don't really have. Well, in like in a twist out, I, I'll wear it up in a ponytail or blown out or something like that. So I don't necessarily get those preservations until I have like a natural ponytail. It doesn't happen often, but it's once in a blue moon. Oh, what did you do to your hair did you cut it yeah I cut it Susan I cut it last night and tomorrow it will be 22 inches because I have a hair appointment 
<laughs> you know, and, and it's just like those microaggressions are, are totally obnoxious. What, whether they mean well or not, it's like, I don't question you about your hair and whether what color it comes in, whether you curl it or anything of the sort. I don't question you about your appearance at all. So why are you dictating and trying to figure out what I do with my, you know, with my morning routine? It's none of your business. Right. You know, and I just feel like as long as I come to work on time, I do my job, I don't cause any problems, how I present, I present myself in a professional manner, it shouldn't matter how I wear my hair, as long as it's not offensive to anyone else's culture. That is the only issue that I see it being, you know, it should be in, in, in any space, but you, you notice it just took until 2020, 2021 for it to be, you know, widely accepted with even with their having legislation against it, which is beyond me. But um, the hair thing, it's, it's, it's part of a, a, a mountain that we need to kind of like chip away at you know, when it comes to Black people, period, in, in the workplace. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, it's absolutely crazy. As you can see, I have locks now. Been here for seven years. But when I first started working in the field, which was seven years ago, I did not have locks. I actually started my locks while I was working. So uh, natural hairstyles were a no-no for me. <laughs> you guys know I was wearing wigs, okay? Yeah. Wearing wigs to work thinking that that is how I was going to be accepted if my hair <laughs> was covered and no one could see the real hair that grows out of my head. So I, even if I did wear my hair, it would be straightened. Or once I did start wearing natural hairstyles, it's definitely all of the safe ones, like a yep. twist out, a blown out twist out, something that gives you length, something that doesn't look too, as they would say, crazy or wild. Um, and then even then when I was wearing wigs, they were like, oh, I thought it was your hair. How? My meeting wig is blonde and long. My regular day wig is a red bob, how? how did you think that yeah. explain <laughs> so and then if you catch me on a good day I may wear my big I did have a big natural one but it was long and it was framed to my face but how did you think that that was my hair I went literally in the same week went from blonde <laughs> to short and red to back jet black so how how did you how did you come to that conclusion and it's crazy because like you said, we never have to ask you, oh, you got a new haircut today. Oh, well, I see you're balding. Are you covering you up with that little side comb? Like we never, I never ask you that. So why you feel the need to ask me about my hair and how it grows out of my head is beyond me, especially when the locks conversation came up in the office and me as the only black woman there and all white men begin to talk about dreadlocks. And I had my locks sitting under my wig as we had this discussion. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. It was crazy. Like one guy, he was like, uh, yeah, I, well, I heard you can't wash it for like six months. False. Well, my friend does it. Is your friend also Caucasian? Like, no, <laughs> you can wash your hair. You don't have to not wash your hair. Like, I don't understand. Well, I don't have anything against it, but I don't like it. Well, you do have something against it because you don't like it. So but why don't you like it? It's not on your head. You don't have to take care of it. You don't even have to look at it if you don't want to. So exactly. why does it bother you so much? Like, why does, why does me being who I am authentically, whatever in whatever capacity that might be, multifaceted or not, why does that bother you so much? Right. Why? My existence. That's it. Exactly. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, it just does not make sense to me. Like, I don't care about John. John can go and I, I don't care if he plays soccer on Tuesdays and Thursdays with Madison and Luke. I don't, I don't care. I don't care if they go to the same barber. I don't care if Luke gets uh, a fade and Madison gets a baldy. I could care less. I just don't understand how someone that has absolutely no no bearing on anyone else's life has anything to do like why why i just right it makes no sense so i guess <laughs> we're going to the next question and i see my my homie keisha is on hey keisha girl if you can make sure you can hear me hey girl i'm sorry i'm late girl it's you okay girl. it's okay we we is live though so oh, oh, okay, okay 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 girl okay okay keep forward with the questions but that kind of uh, that'll lead into the next question. 
when you first started in the workforce and Keisha, this will be a really good one for you. So Keisha has a background, an amazing background. Um, and Candace, I think I explained that to you a little bit, but her background is amazing. So this, this will be something that she could probably touch on a little bit, but when you first started, like your first real job, did you feel welcome into that space? No, Ooh, I'm a choke. <laughs> Don't choke. Oh, I'm, damn, damn, I forgot to put y'all on mute again. Um, well, I would say uh, for my career is a little different. So um, being in the military, okay, so it, it, it's like um, societal groups. So enlisted is more uh, minority based. Officers are more majority based. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the minority, I didn't really, I felt welcome because everybody was like me. Right. When I crossed over and became an officer, I, I became the minority then. Was I welcome? No. Um, and you, that's where I learned how to code switch. We gonna get because to that. You, so don't even don't. Yeah. Even, okay. All right. Yeah. Because. Okay, yeah. So no. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Candice or Joyce. Um. My. I don't go to Joyce because I, I need to figure out which. As far as like my career, career and being a public affairs specialist and in, in the government, was I welcome? Not. Nah. I think I was brought on as like a pawn um, and then it ended up fizzling out and did not work out for the person that, you know, was trying to use me as a, as some sort of leverage. Um, but first job in the workforce, I, probably not. I was on the Eastern shore of Maryland where it's majority white, um, born and raised in that area. So, you know, and it's a really like close knit or, or community where you know you have gener literally generations of family that grow up in that area so um I'm gonna say no a, a complete no okay all right go ahead Joy absolutely not <laughs> um especially with me so of course like I said before my um both of my degrees are in communication so this was my first like hello <laughs> to the world and so initially when they brought me in I kind of just had to work myself up because I came in as a project coordinator so they definitely aren't listening to the person that sits at the front desk right. so um even with that when that first contract that I was on I was the only black woman in the office there was no one else there that looked like me that talked like me um, even when discussions were had, they were had in front of me, but not with me or to me directly. Um, I had an incident where someone tried to say I didn't order something that they requested. And of course, like the email tracking people that we are, I pulled out the receipts and I said, you never asked me for that, but I don't mind putting it on the next order. I received an email telling me to stop responding to the person who was attacking me. Exactly. So absolutely not. I definitely did not feel welcome at all, but it took me about five years to feel welcome. So that's interesting. I, go ahead. Go can ahead, I go. say something about that though? Because it's, I just want to be clear that it's, you know, while we love us, we are also our own worst critics because, you know, in um, one of my positions, it took me a whole year and some change to get the women, black women, I'm gonna keep it all the way funky, um, to have the black women be comfortable enough in my professional skills to be able to do the job that I'm supposed to be doing. While it's understood that there are some like unwritten nuances about, about my job and you know the connections that I have, I don't think it costs anybody anything to do any, you know, some explaining or you know, just hey, be careful or you know, just some general disclaimers, but um, I think it's also a problem within our own community of not being, not opening arms and being welcome and warm to young professionals that are trying to not necessarily get to where the next person is or where that person might be standing because that might not be the assignment to them. It just might, it's just literally nurturing you into the environment, not the position. And right. I don't think that there's a difference 
I don't think that there's a distinction between the two and how we and how we handle that sometimes. Okay, that's good. That's good. I'm not even going to comment because I want I'm watching time. We got a little bit of time. So my workforce didn't really start the way that I thought it was going to start. Um, I worked in daycare for approximately nine years. Um, and working for the federal government in, in child care, you run into a lot of people. So it's, it's not just white people, but I worked with white, I worked with Hispanic, I worked with black, I worked with Filipino. Um, and my first instance wasn't super welcoming because it was almost like they had to test me out. Like, does she really know how to take care of kids? And I remember actually being told that by somebody like, yeah, they don't really trust you with the kids, even though I had maybe two and a half to three years. And anybody that knows me knows that I am excellent when it comes to kids. Okay. That is my forte. So I was like, you know, you questioning my ability. So I'm going to prove it to you. I, I always felt like for me, it was always, I had to, I have always had to prove what my capabilities were. So it was never like, okay, yeah, she's, she got this. She can do the job. It was always nah. I'm not sure if she can do the job or I don't know if she's made for this or uh, she she looks a little too young because I used to get that too. I don't look my age. I actually didn't get hired for a position um, because I was told that I didn't look old enough to be in to be hired for the position. So for me, it was always that that age gap and always trying to trying to prove trying to prove myself. So that was good. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the questions going. Um, oh, can I, can I just, can I, can I just add caveat yeah. to that? So yeah. what I would like to say to y'all is that was, that was a very good point that um, going into a work for going into a new environment, a new workforce, being a minority woman. Um, so you, you already got two knocks against you, your minority and your woman. And then you got that third knock because you're educated. So Other races already, okay, let's just keep it 100. Caucasian people, some of them, they each have their own, um, you know, theories about African-Americans, how they act, what what we think, what we're going to do. So you have to, I would say, from my experience, you have to go in knowing that okay, I might be, I know I'm qualified. I know I'm capable of doing this job, but now I have to show these people here. Like I have to stay two steps ahead of everybody else because they're, they're going to question it, it. No matter what, they're going to question. They're going to, you know, um, treat you different when you get there. It, it's like you're on a, Ninety day, you know, hundred and twenty day, you know, probation just because of who you are, you know, as a person. It, it has nothing to do with your quality. It has nothing to do. With He's in South Carolina. Services is probably just janky. Qualification has nothing to do with that. It has to do with their own stereotypes that they have about us. Because not just those three, then you have those ones that have that notion that all Black women are angry. Then you have those ones that know that notion that all black women have bad attitude and we're aggressive and we're this and we're that. So before you even appear and open your mouth and allow any words to come out of your mouth, these people already have this notion in their mind. So you're basically, you're not working Uh-oh, you might have hit a dead spot. To prove that you're competent for the job that they, they, that we belong where we are. Yes, you're the boss. You're going to it, you can come see. Yeah, I actually, okay. I, you, did you get my text? 
Yeah, I got it. Okay. All right. No, I actually, I actually want to piggyback off of that. I think that leads into a good conversation. Um, in terms of you could be, listen, I decided to get my master's degree because I didn't feel like my undergrad degree was enough. So let me, let me, let me repeat that. I decided to get my master's degree because I didn't think my undergrad degree was enough because I could not get hired even after having an undergrad, even having a bachelor's degree, I could not find a job. So I said, let me go back to school. Maybe that will get them to hire me. So we even have a notion to where we've been told to go to college, right? Because going to college is the best thing. You, you, you know, it's going to get you a job. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. But what it, But one of the things that I think college does fail to tell us sometimes is that you can do all of them things, honey. You can have a degree, you can have your PhD, you can have a master's, you can have a certification in five different things. You could be bilingual and you still might not get the job just because there is someone there that is afraid of your potential. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you said that. A thousand percent that, true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like what, what Keisha was saying, um, it's not only their own their their stereotypes but it's their own insecurities not about themselves and how they're not able to do whatever it is that you are able to do in in such a manner like be it you know just the swag that we have when we do it or just the the, the education piece of it. it it doesn't matter there's always that if i don't know if this is, if i should call it jealousy or envy it might be a little bit of both but ultimately, it's the insecurity or something that the notion that they have that they're inferior to us. When we don't even say that. We just really come in and try to do a job, go, you know, get our check and keep pushing. We don't even, for, you know, I'll speak for myself, I could care less about the people that are, you know, in these quadrants of my professional life. If, that, if you want to be cool, sure. If you don't, that's fine too. You know, ultimately, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to network and to get to wherever my next step is. But for your insecurities, ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah, no, I agree. I like that. I'm glad we, I'm glad we, we went there. So now I'm going to switch it up. I told you I had to throw a little curveball in to kind of tie everything together. So real quick. Ready? <laughs> so listen, if you were in a tag team duel, right? Who'd be your partners? Xena Warrior Princess and Wonder Woman or Storm and Catwoman? I feel like Xena and Wonder Woman are the same person almost. They're the same kind of like oh, warrior s let me put this disclaimer out before the con people come for us. Listen, like I told y'all, we're not <laughs> professionals, okay? We just having a little fun with this. So don't don't come at us, don't come for the throat. <laughs> Don't come for the throat. All right, go ahead, y'all. It was, it was, you said Storm and Wonder Woman? I mean, Storm and Catwoman? Woman. Storm and Catwoman and Xena Warrior Princess or Wonder Woman. I think I'm gonna have to go with Storm and Company. I, I, I don't really remember what Storm's powers were outside of weather. Outside of weather, outside of weather, Storm, okay. <laughs> Uh, she can fly and her name is Storm yes but like I think there was something else with her though right I don't know it's been forever I haven't seen like my version of X-Men went out oh, yeah, he's coming out he coming out go put it on a boat since you're outside years ago <laughs> what, uh... God, I come out. I'll go there you take it on <laughs> there we go um, okay <laughs> yeah. um yeah. I'm gonna keep it funky with y'all if it's the old one I heard old Wonder, Wonder the Wonder old Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the old school Wonder Woman. Okay, go ahead, Joy. I feel like that's kind of tricky. I was sitting here playing scenarios in my head, like if something <laughs> happened with both teams, like <laughs> who would go at it? You know, of course, of course, I'm always gonna go with the ones that got like the full force that's gonna be strong that can bring the heat. But um, sometimes a sneak attack is better. So, um, I guess I'm gonna have to go with. This is so hard. I want to say, 
I can't. Can we find somebody else to answer? <laughs> I, can't answer it. I can't answer it. It's just like so many different scenarios that both would be good for. So I'm just like, who would I choose? Because Wonder Woman and Xena, they coming through and they knocking people out. Like, yes. Yes. that's a fact. Yes. Like, no words. We not talking, no nothing. We getting the job done. But see, like, Storm and Catwoman, see, Storm is going to be whooping something up to, to distract people while Catwoman is getting in there doing what she need to do while the folks is distracted. And Storm, she can, she can hit people with the lightning and stuff. So I, I can't, it's hard for me. I'm sorry, I can't choose. I would, I would, I would have to go with, um, with Storm and Catwoman. That's, like, hands down. I don't even got to think about it. Them the two that I'm going with. Uh, Xena move a little too slow for me sometimes. I need somebody that's gonna get in there and like square up and get ready. <laughs> so, so those once she get going, she good. That's true. But still. <laughs> but still. All right. So Keisha, you said the old, the old school Wonder Woman. All right. So let's let's hop. yes, the old Wonder Woman. Let's <laughs> let's do the old Wonder Woman. All right. All right. Okay. So looking at the time. All right. We got we got time. This is a good one. I think I, I put a star a star next to this one. Do you believe your net worth is appreciated? Oh my God. We got 20 minutes. You said no, Joy? No. Okay. Keisha, how about you? Absolutely. It's appreciated by me. Because okay. I would say, and I'm at a different level from y'all. I when I if I was to go back 20 years I would say no where I am now I say absolutely yes because I am in complete control of it you know what I'm saying yeah I have I put in my time I earn my stripes you know so right now oh yes 15 20 years ago no I would I, no absolutely not okay but my hard work paid off yes sis it did yes it did. and if y'all were to if want i want to i really want to continue this conversation um at some point but if y'all knew the depth of keisha's background you would understand um where she coming from but she has definitely earned her stripe so go ahead candace um not yet i think that they're starting to see it i think that my my current employer definitely my supervisor sees the potential and what i can bring to the table for the for the agency but again, it took me a year and some change for them to actually, you know, even put me in conversations to be in the know of what was going on with the agency. So I think now that they've allowed the opportunity to show and prove, not that my resume and my, uh, my degrees mean anything, but now that I have the opportunity to actually follow through with some of the things that I know that I wanted to do, um, I, I think so. And maybe in my next step, Sure, but right now I still feel like I'm a young college kid in that purview, and I'm 15 years removed. Yeah, same. I'm piggybacking off of y'all. Um, no, but I do think that I am being pushed outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, so I'm still learning. Uh, and if, it, in my opinion, as long as I'm still learning, I'm 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 grabbing on whatever it is that I need to grab on to take to the next position. So eventually I believe that I will be in a space where my net worth will be appreciated. But right now, not necessarily, but I'm also still not professionally where I want to be either. So that makes a big difference as well. So um all right, cool. I go into clarification about my uh, my answer. Yeah, go ahead. So I always say that my employment is like a, <laughs> a, a confused relationship because I actually work for a black woman owned company. However, because we are contractors or consultants as well, I don't get to spend a lot of time with my actual company. So there's sometimes I feel like I'm out there by myself <laughs> with no help. And it seems like when the help does come, it's almost like it's rushed because it's almost too late. 
like there's a issue that's hit the fan and now everybody wants to step in. So when I have these instances where I'm in the room and I'm the only black woman there, it's because I'm working on a contract representing my black owned company. And in most cases we're brought on as the diversity. So <laughs> when I say no, that's why I'm saying no. Do I enjoy what I do? Absolutely. I love it. Now that I'm in it, I love it. Initially, I had no idea what I was doing. So that feeling lonely thing was real. And all of them knew that this was my first time stepping into that realm. And I just didn't feel like I had the backup or the mentors, I should say, or mentorship that was like, you know, this is what you do in this, in this instance, or this is what happened. I kind of just had to figure it out on my own and make sure at the same time I was representing my company well. So you took us into the, to the next question. And I, that was my whole <laughs> life, Joy. My whole life. My so, life. It was so terrible. Completely so, unfortunate. All right. We got like 15 minutes. And I want to get two more, at least two more questions in. So um, do you guys feel like, and uh, Keisha, definitely you too. Do you guys feel like you are supported in your role? And when I say supported, I mean... Um, offered the same type of training, given, um, and that's, when I say training, I mean training in terms of onboarding, right? So you knew when you came in exactly what it was that you were supposed to be doing, you knew what your job title was, you were able to actually start your job. And then in terms of growth within your actual, you know, growth professionally, do you believe that you're offered oper the same opportunity opportunities as your counterparts, whether that be male, white, or, or female, white? Whoever wants to answer first can go first. Ain't nobody going go again? So I will go again. So okay. Okay. Go ahead. my response is no. Um, in any position that I've ever been in, like I said before, I've always had to fight, right? I've always had to prove that I was supposed to be there. Um, and even up until my current, what I'm kind of doing now, um, I had to learn, like you, like you were saying, Joy, like there was no support. You know what I'm saying? There was no SOP that was written to show me how to do my job. It was, here you go. Here's a little background information on, on you know, the, on what you're supporting. Um, if you have any questions, you can come to us. Nine times out of 10, they can't answer the questions because they don't know. And but, while you're learning it, they want you to do the SOP. Yes. Yes. So for me, no, I did not feel like there was any support, even when I worked in, in daycare. Um, there was not. I was I was the support. I was the voice. You know what I mean? I was the person that didn't mind stepping on a little bit of toes to, to shake some things up if it meant making those around me happy. Um, so even in my current role now, no, that I don't feel like I necessarily have support, but I'm learning that I'm learning to to I'm learning through the struggle. Right. So I'm learning that. I've always been in situations like this. So I got to kind of just take it for what it is, take all that I can get, put it in my little knapsack and keep it pushing. So whoever else wants to go can go ahead. Okay, since y'all being shy, I'm going to just go ahead and I'll jump on, jump on right on in here, right? So this is what I have to say. This is what I have to say. Throughout the years, um, I had that same frustration that you all, that um, Tamika is talking about. You, you get in a position, you don't, I mean, even now, when I took the job that I got now, like, they didn't, you know, it wasn't nothing, you know, if I didn't already know my job, then I would have been out there flapping. And there was times where, you know, things came up. And it's like, well, nobody told me. How was I supposed to know? I'm not a mind reader. But, you know, you adapt and you overcome. But what I would tell you is this. Remember those two steps ahead I told you guys about? Like, it's going to always be the case because they, they, there are some factors that lead up to that. One, everybody don't work like you. Their work ethic is not going to be like ours. You have to understand that with us being not minorities, everything is a struggle for us. Success is a struggle. You know, uh, wealth is a struggle. Education is a struggle. We have to struggle at everything by the nature of 
our ancestors and where we come from it's, it's going to always be a struggle if it's not worth it it's not if it's if it's not worth it it's not going to be a struggle so there are going to be times where you may get a job where you go in behind somebody and they was pretty darn squared away they have sops in place they are there to onboard you and make sure you're squared away but nine times out of ten that is not going to be the case and just like someone said earlier once you get there and you figure it all out they're gonna the expectation is then well 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 tamika has it well tamika she did so and so and so well tamika why don't you put together an sop because they know that at the end of the day, what your work ethic is. So it, you have to choose, you have to say, the job has to be, any job that you are on, it has to be about you. It can't be about no one else around you. You already working for someone building wealth for them. So you gotta, what I always do is I look at it as how, how can I benefit from this relationship that I have with my employer? So what's going to make me better? Me doing what I'm supposed to be doing, me edifying and, you know, doing my job to the best of my ability. So when it comes time for, you know, raises, promotions or whatever, I'm in line. That's how I get my part of the deal that I have went in on with my employer. So it's not really about, they wasn't, they didn't prepare you. Uh, the same thing I tell Tamika, you should always have several mentors, people that look like you and people that don't look like you, because there, there are going to be times, nine times out of 10, when you get into an environment and a situation like that, there is not going to be anybody to say, hey, you know, they gave me this assignment. Can you help me? Or what are your suggestions on where to begin? Because if that was the case, uh, Amy or Jill or one of them would have been had did it already but it's not done because Amy and Jill don't know what they're doing too most likely so you already see okay I don't have no help here because they just don't know sometimes it's not it's, it's not always with the you know um, virtue of who you are but just like um, the young lady said earlier that the intimidation of your education, you know, your swag, the way you go about things, the way you network, the way you communicate. Yes, that's a level of intimidation. So no, they're not going to help you be successful at, at those things. So you have to have the reach about, you have to be able to communicate and, you know, reach out to people and um, build your network. So if something comes up, all right, let me call over here to, you know, my homie or whatever to make those things happen because you're not going to all it, it nine times out of ten you're not going to walk into a situation where you're going to be prepared to do your job successfully nine times out of ten you, you're not it's, it's not going to happen so you have to go into it with that mentality okay how do i stay two steps ahead look at what i'm look at the cards that i'm dealt how do i win this hand and that's how you have to go about it. You know, it, it's the partnership, any job that you accept, it's a partnership between you and that employer. That employer is, at the end of the day, that employer is going to get out of you what it is that you signed on that dotted line to do. And that employer is going to build wealth for their company. You need to look at it as, how do I get success from this relationship? Come on, sis, with the good with the good start. Come on. All right, that was a whole word. <laughs> so we are winding down. I didn't even get to Candace, you was right. I definitely didn't get to half of my questions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let this last one uh fizzle on out. So what advice would you give your younger self? Oof. About what? About work? To what advice could you give your younger self to prepare you for the workforce, to prepare you for being black in the work, a black woman in the workforce? To man what would you tell your younger self? How would you tell your younger self to maneuver in a room full of vultures? Don't take it personal. Quick. Okay. That's Don't take it personal. One. That is number one for me. Like, 
and yep. don't take it personal and you know yourself don't let nobody tell you who you are or who you aren't no one that's right be confident in who you are that's right right i would say you have a voice so use it um again what it goes back to just being the only woman there sometimes i just shrink because all of them just seemed so overbearing. And so once I did start to speak and then they would listen, I was like, oh, <laughs> I got the hang of this now. I had to just go ahead and say that to begin with. That's all I had to say. And it doesn't always you know, get received initially, but they always circle back. Hey, Joyous, <laughs> you mentioned this in a meeting. Oh, I did, huh? You were listening. <laughs> Now especially you understand. When you want to take the idea and run with it. Yes. Yeah. Listen, yeah. it's crazy, especially with what I do. Like, the community can shut down an entire project. All you need is one complaint. Right. You right. can. It can shut down an entire project. It delays your timeline. Money is being lost, and you don't want that. I try to go in. My job is to look ahead. <laughs> I have to think about things that are going to happen beyond what we can ever think of, which is kind of crazy. But if I tell you, I'm saying it for a reason. So it's to use your voice. Um, don't allow someone to overpower you because what they're saying right there, right then and there, they may be a bit more forceful than you are. Um, I'm usually normally a little meek if I don't know you. <laughs> kind of shy but see me making that face and so it's can this y'all know but you know um just go in and be you don't you know shy away just because it looks like the thing to do use your voice you have it for I reasons. Think, I like those. from what i know of the the lady well i'll say i'm, I'm not sure that this would apply to you keisha but joy and tamika are observers so it's not, in my in my opinion, I don't think that they're necessarily meek or timid in the first situation. They're really trying to figure out, as, as well as myself, we're trying to figure out how to scope. We're reading the room, trying to figure out how to approach these situations because True. number one, they're new. Number two, we are Black women. We have to be very, very intentional about what we say um, and make mm -hmm. sure that it's, it, it's not offensive. It's this million checklists that we have to go through if we decide that, that we want to challenge something and mm. I don't necessarily think mm. that it's fair I mean of course but you know the only thing that is what that's at the fair are, are pigs is, is that the analogy I don't know it's one of country joints um, <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like one other thing is we got three minutes I lost it I'm sorry come back to me later okay I think I would say um Keep your head high. Head high to the finish, see it through. Um, seriously. I, you know, especially when I work, and I say, I, I keep going back to the daycare because that's really where a lot of my professional growth came from. But I was very easily um, intimidated. Somebody could say something to me and I would cry. It would hurt my feelings. Um, I didn't know how to be this bold, you know, like the, the stuff that I learned in Delta. I didn't know how to it was almost like I forgot how to use it. You know, you have these transitional skills and we sometimes we forget about those skills and those skills will take you, a little bit of everything will, will, will take you. If you can grab it all, it'll, it will count for something. So I think for me, okay, I got one minute. So I think for me, it will definitely be, um, just keep your head high. Don't, like like Keisha said, don't, think, don't take things personal. Like Joy said, use your voice. Like Candace said, um, be okay, be you. And I think if in the end, it's going to work out the way that it's supposed to work out. Always does. Always does. Always. Does. Always. So please, Absolutely. Before we leave, two things. We got to make it quick, though. Um, Give us your, we're all entrepreneurs in some space. I never did mention that in some space. So um, follow me at Meeks Mantra. Meeks Mantra. M-E-I-K-S-M-A-N-T-R-A. -S on Instagram, on Facebook. Candice, go ahead. Um, a short version, follow me personally and I'm directed to everything underscore K-A-Y-E-L-L-E-B-E-E -E -E underscore and that's on Instagram. Once again, that's at underscore K-A-Y-E-L-L-E-B-E-E -E -E underscore for hair and lunch. Yeah. Um, I actually do event 
and wedding planning and coordination. Um, and you can find my business page at a joyous occasion, the number four and you. Keisha. And that's why on you. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Keisha, where can the folks I'm all about I'm, I'm all about supporting our community. Um I have an expressive t-shirt line. It is say it with your chest. That's say S A Y W I T Y O C H E S T two dot com. Say it with your chest two dot com. All right. The last question, and then we are done. Who is your favorite superhero? And go. Wonder Woman, the old one. Keisha. <laughs> all right, all right, that's fair. Wonder Woman. Hey. Who else? Who wanna go next? Batman. Batman, okay. Um, I don't know why you give me these hardest questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always like what's your favorite character because clearly you know I'm going to say Mickey Mouse but um, <laughs> my favorite superhero yeah they're all probably Linda Carter Wonder Woman I know she was probably before your time but it's okay okay we're going with uh, Keisha said it's <laughs> Wonder Woman y'all <laughs> mine would have to be Iron Man Spider Man because he's an engineer see when i work with the stem pro see my i gained them tools from the stem program that i used to work with i remember now <laughs> i'm gonna say black panther yes! oh that's what's up <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> nah but thank y'all so so much i think this was a great conversation i definitely want to continue because it's a lot of questions we didn't even get into cold switching we didn't get into none of that but this was an awesome awesome conversation i appreciate y'all taking y'all time out today to join me on this and just spread sp start the conversation scrape away at the conversation i think that in our community, we have to start talking more and stop assuming that people know, because we don't. Ignorance is definitely bliss and it is, and everybody has a part of it. So I just want to say thank y'all. Um, make sure whoever's watching y'all check us out on our uh, our social media platforms. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank y'all. It was fun. Check out the rest of HBCU call. We wrap up on Sunday. It's panels all throughout the week. Um, if you go to our virtual space, which I will share, um, there are virtual vendors. It's a really cool space. It's like Sims. And I never really got into Sims when I was younger, but I'm kind of jealous that I didn't because this is cool. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm going over my time. Thank y'all. It was. It has been a pleasure. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Uh, and yeah, we out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.